Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to attempt to do something that I've never actually tried before, and that is the creation of a cellular automata uh, simulation. Today, I'm going to try and do Predator and Prey. The rules of this are as follows. So the world is made out of a grid of cells. In each one of these cells can contain one of three things, either a predator represented by red, prey represented by green, or nothing represented by nothing or black. In each step of the simulation, both species will move around randomly. Both species also have a certain amount of health. For the prey, their health is constantly increasing throughout the simulation. When it reaches a certain threshold, they reproduce, and then their health resets to zero. For the predators, the health is constantly decreasing, and when it reaches zero, they die, and then it turns into nothing. However, if the predator moves onto the same cell as the prey, then the predator will reproduce. And then using the prey's health, it will heal itself, and that's about it. I also have the rules of this in the description. So that seems simple enough, let's get into this. So, of course, this is different from my usual type of videos where I usually, you know, create games, but I just wanted to try something different for a change. Anyways, first of all, I had to work out a way to represent the grid of the different species types. So, the first part of this is the colour, whether a cell is red, green, or black. And to this, I use an STD vector of SSML vertices. Uh, this is really good because, first of all, it makes it really easy to change the colour of the cells, and second of all, I can just draw the whole vertex array in a single draw call, which is very efficient. So, for testing purposes, I started off by filling the array with a different shade of grey. And this requires basically two steps. First of all, you have to position the SFML vertices so they know like where on the window to actually be drawn, and second of all, you just have to give them the colour. And the result of this can be seen here. The second thing to do is the actual representation of the creatures. So to do this I created the class called Creature and then use an enum class to represent what type of creature it is, whether it's a prey, a predator or just nothing at all. And of course it also holds the health of each creature. So these creatures are actually stored in a different std vector from the sfml vertex array or the std vector of sf vertices. So I had to sort of connect these two std vectors together because of course the colour is representation of the creature type. So to do this is quite simple, they just share the same index in the different arrays. So anyways, to start off with I give the creatures a random type and then simply using if and switch I can then get their colours. The result of this can be seen here, because as you can see on the window, the pixels now have either a red, green or black colour, representing the different creature types. Now that I had a virtual representation of different types of creatures on the screen, it was now time to implement what happens during each step of the simulation. Now to do this, I just simply followed the rules that I mentioned at the start of the video, or you can find them in the description. I'm going to be honest here, now my implementation of this is probably really terrible and this is simply because it's my first time doing a cellular automata or whatever it's called. So because of that really, as long as it works, I'm pretty happy. Now the first tests of this went pretty terribly because as you can see the whole screen turns into predators and then all the predators die out really quickly. I then thought it would be a good idea if I could get some text to draw on the window, and this text would show me how many predator and prey is in this simulation at any given time. And well, after this, it was just a lot of trial and error to try and get it to work correctly. Of course, there were a lot of logic errors, however, even after fixing these logic errors, it was still hard to get the right balance of, um, you know, predator, prey and nothingness at the start to allow for a nice equilibrium throughout the simulation. So let's see if I can get it to work correctly. Here is the final result. It works exactly as expected, when the prey becomes like way too much, the predator just wipes them all out and then eventually it just turns into some kind of very nice equilibrium. And here is just a little bit of a sped up footage of it working. So anyways, that's it, thank you for watching. I would like to thank my Patreon supporters, Timothy Gibbons and Guy Kimo Pertin. Your support really means a lot to me and well, Thank you! So anyways, once again, thank you for watching. As per usual, the source code and a download link can be found in the description below. And be warned, the source code isn't great, but yeah, it's still there.
So just enjoy the rest of this but not footage for the rest of the video. Bye.